Hello and welcome to Fitness Training Solutions Anatomy Series Part 3. So today we're going to look at the muscular system, which is part one of the muscular, uh, muscular system. Due to the size of this um, area, we had to split this into two sections for you, just to give you bite-sized chunks for your uh, anatomy revision. So the learning outcomes, you should be able to identify three types of muscle tissues, define the characteristics and functions of the three types of muscle, describe the basic structure of skeletal muscle, name and locate anterior and posterior muscles. You should be able to describe the structure and function of the pelvic floor muscles, describe the different types of muscle actions, identify the joint actions brought about for specific muscle groups, and identify skeletal muscle fiber types and characteristics. So the first section, what are we looking at? What is a muscle? So quick question for you, what is a muscle? Let's get something written down now. Okay, so hopefully you've looked at different types of muscle tissue. So before we work out what the answer was, let's give you some more information. So smooth muscle, found for example in the digestive system, cardiac muscle or myocardium found in the heart. And then you've got skeletal muscle, which is striated. For example, the hamstrings or triceps. And you can see the diagrams to the right hand side. So that should have been an easy one. You should understand what they are, but let's break it down in a little bit more detail for you. So smooth muscle, what are we looking at? It's controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Nervous system is something we're gonna go in, um, into much more detail uh, later on in, in uh, the other sections of our work. Involuntary, not under our conscious control. Found in the digestive system, the blood vessels and the urinary and re uh, reproductive system. Usually in all processes that maintain the body's internal environment. For example, the muscles of the digestive tract contract to move food through the body. Cardiac muscle, found in the heart, the chambers of the walls. Main function is to pump blood around the body. It should work continuously. It's involuntary, so it's not under our conscious control. Contraction of the heart is controlled by the synatrial node, or the SAN, SAN. And then we have skeletal uh, tissue. So skeletal muscle tissue is striated. It attaches to the bones across joints via tendons, controlled by the somatic nervous system, and it works under our consciousness, or voluntary control. Contract and pull on the bones to produce locomotion and movement. Resist the force of gravity to hold the body upright. So characteristics of muscle tissue. So muscle tissue, they're elastic. So elasticity, the ability to stretch and recoil the original shape. Ability to contract, contractility and the ability to lengthen, extensibility, electro-elasticity, um, the ability to respond to an electrical stimulus. What about these muscles? What do you know of these muscles so far? You can take a picture of this diagram, print it out, and try to work out which muscles are where. So if you can do that, that'd be amazing. If you want the answers, here they are right now. So you've got the pe uh, pectoris major, bicep brachii, the rectus abdominis, the deltoids, internal obliques, quadriceps, adductors, the tibularis anterior, external obliques. You've got the upper trapezius, iliopsis and then posterior meaning the back so what have we got we've got the latissimus dorsi gluteus maximus we've got our hamstrings gastric nevus the layers 
triceps brachii, hip adductor, trapezius, rhomboids, erector spinae. As you can see from the diagram, it's the basic structure of muscle, uh, skeletal muscle. So you've got the tendon and the fascia that goes around the outside. You've got the muscle belly itself. You've got the epi epimycin. Fasciculi. The perimycin. The muscle fiber. The endomycin. The myofibril. And these myofibrils break down even further themselves in different structures. So you've got the sarcomere which then breaks down filaments such as myosin and a thicker filament such as myosin. So the myosin acts in form what we know as the sliding filament theory, as you can see from the diagram. And this is showing you muscle contraction. As you can see, the myosin heads are pulling the actin filaments closer towards them. And I'll just go back to that for a second to show that again. So as you can see, you've got the myosin pulling the actin towards it, and this generates muscle contraction. I'm going to go into more detail on the sliding filament theory for you, but today that's all I've got for that section. So we've got fast and slow twitch muscle fibers. The skeletal muscle comprises of a mixture of two distinctive fiber types. So you've got slow twitch type one and fast twitch type two. So slow twitch fibers and fast twitch. So the slow twitch fibers are generally red in color. They're gonna be formed for aerobic activity and they're rich in mitochondria. Whereas fast switch fibers are white, they're poor blood supply, they're anaerobic base activity, and they're poor in mitochondria. So the mitochondria is a powerhouse of a cell. So obviously with a type one, which is for an aerobic event, you're gonna need loads of batteries to keep going. Whereas for a faster event, which is not required for a long period of time, you probably need less batteries, so in terms of poor mitochondria. As you can see, Fast twitch are quicker to fatigue, and slow um, slow twitch muscle fibers are slower for, uh, slow to fatigue. And it depends on how you train. Are you aerobically or anaerobically? So name an athletic event which mainly slow twitch fibers would be used. I think. Hopefully, you've got distance running. So distance running event, marathon runners would use slow twitch. Whereas fast twitch muscle fibers are going to be used in sprint events. Okay, so where would you locate the pelvic floor muscles? What would be a pelvic function of the uh, pelvic floor muscles? The pelvic floor muscles themselves, the structure, it comprises of a small group of muscles an associative connective tissue which span the area of the underneath pelvis. The function is to provide support for the pelvic organs and prevent stress incontinence. It facilitates birth by resisting the descent of the presenting baby, form the lower part and inner unit, So we're going to stop there for today's session. Again, it's a short, bite-sized chunk. Just to give you an insight, there's going to be a lot more information in your manual. So please have a look at your manual, but this is going to help you in terms of understanding what the anterior and posterior skeletal muscles are, characteristics and functions of the three types of muscle tissue, and hopefully give you a brief outline of the pelvic floor muscles. I'll see you next time for part four and muscles part two.